Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome. After thoroughly examining and testing the high-end engraving laser S1 from Xtool in our last video, today, as promised, I bring you the separate video for the unboxing, assembly, and setup of the laser. We'll go step by step to see what accessories we actually receive with the engraving laser, what we need to consider during assembly, and how we should proceed with the setup to finally get the laser up and running. If you haven't watched the previous video where I put the laser through its paces, you should definitely catch up on that. The device's functionality is truly remarkable and the results are impeccable, but I won't say more about it. It's best if you see it for yourself. I'll link the video again in the top right corner of the info card. So let's now focus directly on the laser, but if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel and activate the bell to not miss any future videos. You can find the current prices of the laser to support this channel in the video description below. Thank you very much for your support, and let's get started. Starting with the contents of the package, it's worth mentioning that it depends on which version you choose. As shown in the video, Xtool currently offers five variants for both the 20 and 40 watt lasers. In my case, I have variant number two, the so-called basic kit with air assist and honeycomb plate. For the majority of use cases, I believe this configuration is the best choice, but it can be also expanded later according to your needs. With the basic kit shown, we receive a total of three separate packages. As already visible from the outside, the largest package contains the laser and small accessories. Two additional packages contain the honeycomb plate and the air assist set. Upon opening the largest box, it's immediately apparent that the laser is securely padded and fixed inside with cardboard templates and plastic inserts. Since the laser weighs approximately 14 kilograms and is not really small, Xtool had to employ a trick in the packaging. As you can see, positioned on the right and left are two straps that fully encompass the laser. This makes it possible to remove the laser from the packaging without damaging it, even without a second person. By the way, these straps are attached to each other with Velcro and serve no other purpose besides removing the laser from the package and the remaining packaging frame. So, that's all there is to the contents of the first box. The small accessories, as we will see shortly, are stored inside the actual laser. But before we delve into that, let's take a closer look at the other two boxes. One of them is for the honeycomb plate of the S1. Upon opening the box, we find a small user manual at the top, followed by a total of four magnetic holders, and finally, at the bottom of the box, the actual honeycomb plate. In the last of the three boxes, on the other hand, as mentioned earlier, we find the air assist set. Here too, we first receive a user manual in multiple languages and a short hose. Directly below that is the actual air pump with the connection cable and two additional filters, completing the contents of this package. Moving on, we'll now examine the S1 closely because there's still a lot more to the contents. As you can see in the video, there are several small adhesive strips with yellow arrow markings on the device. These prevent the laser from accidentally opening during transport and must be removed beforehand, along with the protective film on the green plastic cover. We need to carefully remove these to use the laser. Now for the surprise. As you can see, the interior of the laser is also filled with contents to maximize space efficiency. At the top are two flat boxes. From the left one, we get the operating manual for the laser and another brochure for creative engraving ideas. On the right side of the box, there's a small material set where we can perform various test runs beforehand. Directly below that is an extendable exhaust hose with a diameter of 80 millimeters, a box with small accessories like screws and wrenches, and six small aluminum profiles. If you think that's all, you're mistaken. After removing the large foam insert, you'll find two additional compartments in the far corners of the laser. 
From the box on the left side, we receive firstly the power cord, a small USB Type-C cable, and last but not least, the heart of the S1, namely the laser module. Finally, we also receive the appropriate power supply, and that's it. I would say the package contents are truly impressive and, in my opinion, definitely more than sufficient. However, before we can fire up the machine, it needs to be assembled and set up. I suggest we take a brief look at this now. Step number one is to remove the stickers and temporary fixations inside the laser. These are fixed to prevent the laser axis from accidentally moving around during transport and potentially causing damage. The stickers themselves indicate this and should be removed along with the fixations. On both the left and right sides, we find two small rubber stoppers mounted with Allen screws. Simply remove these with the included key and peel off the stickers as well. In my case, as you can see, the stickers left some adhesive residue, but I was able to remove it completely with an adhesive residue remover. Now the laser axis is movable again and we can carefully pull it out by hand. As you can see, there's space for the laser head on the movable carriage in the middle. However, due to the protective film held in place by two cable ties on the right and left, we can't mount it directly. So, in this case, the cover must be first carefully removed with scissors or a knife. Please be careful not to accidentally damage the cable or hose while doing so. Next, we turn our attention to the actual laser module. Whether it's 20 or 40 watts, the procedure's the same. As you can see, the laser module has two existing ports on the left side. One for all the cables and another for the air supply. Both ports need to be connected to the laser module. The good news is that the insertion direction is fixed, so the plug can only be inserted in one direction. With that, the laser module is now connected and we can attach it to the axis. In this regard, Xtool has thought ahead as the receptacle on the axis has a small tapered recess and the laser head has a protruding nose. This allows us to insert and fix the laser module, leaving both hands free. On the top side, there are two small recesses through which the module is ultimately securely mounted with the included screws. After doing this, we need to retrieve the focus tool from the small box, which is the elongated extendable tip. On the right side of the laser, we find a suitable recess for this purpose. The device attaches completely magnetically, so we only need to snap it on, and that's it. Well, maybe not quite, because there are also a few small tasks waiting for us on the back. Let's start with the installation of the exhaust hose because if the laser is located indoors, installing this hose is definitely advisable. For this, we first remove the grill on the right side with the included key. We can then set the grill aside. We'll need the screws again shortly. Next, we mount the hose in the same spot, which fits directly into the grill's recess and is reattached with the same four screws. By the way, the hose is extendable and can be lengthened to a certain point. However, I would personally recommend purchasing an extension, as in most cases, the hose will simply be too short. In addition to the hose, it's advisable for optimal results to connect the air pump to the device. For this, we find the outlet on the back, where the included hose is attached and slightly above that, a narrow port for data and power. This cable is also included in the package. The back of the laser looks similar, with the note that for connecting the air pump, we must use the upper round inlet. The lower one is intended for the fire extinguishing device, but more on that in a separate video. The most important thing missing now is the power supply. The port for this is located on the left side, directly below the power switch. As we've seen, the cable and power supply are naturally included. The final steps involve unlocking the red emergency stop button on the right side of the housing and connecting the laser to the power source. However, the most crucial step of all is attaching the safety key. For this purpose, on the back, we find two small USB ports where we need to insert at least one of the two keys provided in the package. Otherwise, the laser cannot be activated and we might frantically search for the problem why the device is not functioning. Once we've completed all of this, we're essentially ready to go. 
At this point, we can only decide whether we want to control the device with a smartphone or a PC. In the case of a smartphone, we need the free Creative Space app from Xtool, available for both Android and iOS. On the PC, it's the same story. Xtool also offers its proprietary software, Creative Space, which we can download for free for Windows and Mac, allowing us to start engraving directly. The entire connection worked smoothly in my test, including the laser's connection to my Wi-Fi network. The only thing that requires an additional step is the connection with the well-known software Lightburn. If you intend to perform complex engravings and intricate settings in this case, this program is pretty much indispensable. However, to control the laser with the software, we need an additional configuration file. You can find this on the manufacturer's website or directly as a link below in the video description. Fairly high up on the page is a download link where we can obtain the file. Then we open Lightburn and click on Devices under the Console tab. There we select Import and choose the downloaded configuration file. Once we've done this, our connected Xtool laser appears and we can select it from the drop-down menu. Thus, our new S1 from Xtool is not only fully assembled, but also set up and ready to use, allowing us to start generating revenue from our creative ideas. With that, I conclude this compact video. If you enjoyed it, please show your support with a hearty thumbs up to support my work. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and activate the bell to not miss any future videos. You can find the current prices of the laser below in the video description. Thank you very much for your support, and until next time, stay healthy and goodbye.